Got all the bolts out. Let's see the damn pooch. Hey, what is up everybody? So, um, unfortunately, uh, I am by myself today. So as you can see, I am, you know, filming myself. Uh, but uh, hopefully later, Ben or, you know, some of the homies can come st uh, stop by, Damon, Eddie, if they want to. But uh, I am going to be tackling this, uh, this clutch and lightweight flywheel. The, the clutch is from uh, Clutch Masters and so is the lightweight flywheel. So it uh, should be a wonderful pair. Uh, I don't have any experience with these two uh, products, but um, you know I'm sure they, they make good quality parts. You know, it's Clutch Masters, a pretty well-known brand. But um, yeah, if you can't already tell, this is uh, my homie Cisco's uh, Focus ST, not mine. Mine is uh, on my driveway over there. Eventually, when the engine is built, I will be doing the same thing. But the engine will be obviously out of the car, so it'll be a lot easier to do. You know, just. You don't have to deal with having everything else with a car in the way. So, yeah, I guess we can just kind of dive straight into this. A uh, quick update, I guess. Um, this is the car that we did the water meth kit on. So, just an update on that. It is cleaned up uh, from the at the end of the video on that one. The wiring kind of looked really, really bad, but we got everything cleaned up. Uh, the tank's still in the back. The pump's still in the back. But the, uh, the controller where all the wires go, it's all cleaned up, all nice looking, so that's good to go. Oh, and another thing too, I thought I'd mention it. Um, the hats, and uh, we have shirts and stickers uh, on our website, so you can actually go and buy these hats. Not the uh, black and red ones, so these are exclusive to us, but we do have you know the black uh, with the Valley Crew uh, logo on the front, and then the black mesh in the back, we have that, and then a black with white in the back. So you can choose from that. Um, we also have t-shirts, just black on red with a little VC circle on your uh, on the little pocket location. And then we have stickers. So if you if you want to, feel free to you know go to our store, check it out, and check us out, check the website out, and let us know how you feel about it. But yeah, uh, let's dive into this thing. So before anybody says anything like, oh, the clutch looks damaged, looks used. So the, the engine in this car actually unfortunately blew. So uh, Cisco had some guy come out and he swapped, they swapped the engine. So the engine is, uh, it's only got like, like 16,000 miles on it. So that's cool. Unfortunate for him, but you know, that's what he has to deal with. But the, uh, the guy who was installing the engine uh, tried fitting the clutch on the OEM uh, flywheel. Now, if you're familiar with these cars, they have a two-piece, you know, multi-piece flywheel, which you know does isn't really compatible with most of the performance uh, clutches. Now they're coming out with new ones that are, you know, they're uh, usable with the factory flywheel. But for the most part, when you uh, upgrade your clutch, you're pretty much, you know, almost mandatory. You upgrade your flywheel. That and why not? You're there. It's substantially lighter. I mean, like, look, you can, I don't know if you can tell. I mean, obviously it's a video, but it's substantially lighter than the factory one. And, you know, it's, you know, they're similar, they're this exact same brand, so you, everything fits perfectly as it should, and we shouldn't have any problems. It comes with, you know, your hardware. This uh, comes with the clutch. It's just your clutch alignment tool. And, um, you know, stickers, because that's why you do these things, is so you can get stickers, and, you know, that's what gets the actual horsepower and the gains there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to start tearing into the top section of the engine, and then, you know, this will be later. This will be when the transmission is out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, film all of this in one day or one night, because it is, like, you know, 5 o'clock. But I'm going to be continuing tomorrow. On the project yeah so this video will be split up into uh, it's not gonna be split up into two parts but you're gonna see tomorrow or you know yeah tomorrow when I'm working on the car but for right now we're just going to uh, get the the top section of the engine all ready for the trans to come out get the battery out get all the things out of the way so we can reach the bell housing bolts and you know Ben's gonna come by with some tools to help you know ease the installation I gotta say Cisco I am jealous of your hood because I do want vents and the carbon does look really good. But yeah, there's her new heart. Uh, like I said, 16,000 miles. Uh, well, everything, I mean, if you look at it, it looks pretty stock. But, you know, this thing actually, it hauls ass. This thing is pretty quick. So, yeah. I'm going to start 
uh, disassembling the um, intake section, battery box, get that out and just kind of move everything out of this general vicinity, move it out of the way and then get to the starter which is right there. There's the starter right there. There's a bracket. There's a, see that, that uh, nut with the studs sticking out? That's going to be what we're taking out. There's going to be that and the one on the bottom. And then, you know, once we have all of that out, we disassemble the shift linkage, which is down there. That green and white looking thing, that's with the, the balls that, you know, go on to the transmission itself that helps shift it into gear, the cables. But, um, yeah, once we're done with that and get everything out of the way, then uh, Ben can come by. He can give us the tools we need to continue the install. So when you're doing this, I mean, it's going to vary for everybody because you know everybody has a different setup unless you have the same kind of cob um, intake as he does but um, pretty much what you're going to start with is you know the air box get the air box out of the way or you know air filter pod filter whatever intake period intake period is just going to have to come out um let's see what else because i don't want to sit here and uh explain everything you know and just go step by step because i'm going to turn into a super long video but short short story or long story short um, you have to remove the cowl, which means you have to remove both wipers, you know, take that out. Um, in the back, there's the PCV line for the intake, take that off. Intake will, should come off after you take the clamp off in the back, then you'll have all that done. Um, pretty self-explanatory with the battery, negative, uh, I guess, terminal, not really the actual battery terminal, but the negative connection is right here, the ground. Take that off, you can actually leave that connected to the battery for the meantime. Then you disconnect the, um, positive get that out of the way and then there's these two the t little, little tie downs take that off and then um, you kind of pull on this front plate and then you're able to remove that and then the battery should slide out and then after that point I'll show you guys underneath where there are I think three uh, bolts that hold the battery box in place but yeah I'm gonna work on getting the intake off uh, I'm gonna see if we can do it without removing the bumper because with the jacks we're, we probably gonna, are gonna be able to get it high enough to where we don't need to remove the bumper we can just pull the trans out just from under the car with no problem but I'm gonna pull the air box or the uh, intake off um, you know just start getting things out of the way so that way we can access some of the bell housing bolts back there get the battery out move some stuff out of the way and then um, yeah, I'll update you guys when I am a little bit further on in the process because I do not think you guys want to see this whole thing because I'm sure you guys can kind of figure it out based on your setup. And if you've done this before or if you've if you've uh, installed the intake and, you know, actually modified a decent amount of your car, you know, you should have some mechanical knowledge of what to do and what to remove. So, yeah. So I thought I'd mention, you know, what it's like, like say if, if you don't know what it's like for your clutch to go bad. Um... Basically, the best way to explain it is, so like, if if you're just, you know, going, you know, you're in gear, and you go for a pole, you go to accelerate, and the RPMs strangely go up, there's no tire squealing, no nothing like that, um, almost seems like there would be, you know, it would be wheel spin, but um, the RPMs shoot up for no reason uh, when your foot is off the clutch, and uh, you start smelling like this burning uh, metal smell almost like like hot brakes like if you if you ever smelled hot brakes before after you know you've done some some aggressive driving um that's pretty much exactly what it smells like so if you smell that and you know you're experiencing those symptoms your clutch is probably you know it's it's taking a toll so um that's an easy way of knowing whether or not you need to replace your clutch but um, just thought i'd throw that out there just in case anybody was like oh how do you know if your clutch is bad but yeah so that's pretty much you know how you know but yeah i'm gonna get back to it I, I literally just started so i'm just gonna take all this off you know map uh, the air temperature sensors take that off and keep going and then i'll update you guys with what to do after we get all of this out of the way so yeah all right just real quick so for the cowl just so people who don't know there's these uh i believe they're 10 millimeter bolts um, on either side, you take these covers off. There are these right here. You know, you just pry up on them, come off it pretty easy. Then you take the wipers off, 15 millimeter nuts, you know, wiggle them off. And then uh, there's these, uh, I believe, T30 Torx uh, screws here. And then there's one on the exact same spot on the other side. Same with the, those, those are pretty identical. So once you have that off, then and the wipers off, the couch comes off. So, 
Now, if anybody doesn't know how to take out the cowl, that's how you do it. Pretty quick, simple. But now we have access to pretty much anything we need back here. So, yeah, I'm going to move on to the battery, get the intake out, and take the clamp off the back, and it should be good. All right, front of the intake's out. Positives disconnected, negatives disconnected. Um, now there's this little sensor back here, or, you know, right, this little plug right here. Just pull the tab, pull it out, and then you can just put that to the side. Now when it comes to the cover, you know, you just lift and it just comes off. So now I took the tie down off already, so the battery's ready to come out. So I'm just gonna yank her out. And then, ooh, she'll sit there until we put her back in. And then there's those bolts that I was telling you about. There's one there, one there, and one there. And once we have that out, we'll kind of disconnect some of these wires here, probably just those two on the bottom, just so we can move this out of the way and move that harness out of the way. And then I already loosened the clamp in the back and then the bolt here, so this should, oh wait, no, I still got the PCV, so PCV needs to get disconnected and then the intake can come out. So on the side of the battery box, uh, there's going to be your sound symposer valve, which is right there. That's what this tube is right here, it goes straight to the valve. Um, there's just going to be this little Phillips head screw, um, screws into this location right here through this hole. Just take it out and then, you know, get it loose. And then the box should just, you know, wiggle out. Boom. And then you just put that next to the battery. And we got all the space and we have access to the trans mount. So that is going to be what we're working with when we're about to remove the transmission. We remove that bolt, support the engine trans, and then um, from there we just lower it. And then we'll be able to, after we have all the, you know, the axles, both axles out, we can remove the transmission and then be on our way. All right, so Ben showed up and he's, uh, he's helping us out. So um, basically an update of where we came so far since we went and grabbed some tools just for, you know, later when we we're going to be removing the trans. But um, we have disconnected the shift linkage. So this is... Um, it's going to be down here when it's all in place. I don't know if we can get a left of it. But here is the, it's going to be attached to this green one right here is going to be attached here. And then this black one here is going to be attached to this ball right here. And these are just, you know, the simple uh, ball, I guess, joints. And that you just pop them off with like a flat head or something you can get in there. And then as for the, the collar that locks in into this bracket here. So pretty much, let me put the light back. Pretty much with these, uh, they're gonna be locked in the collar or the brackets down there. And what you do is you just pull back on this little sleeve and then they, they come straight out of the, uh, the brackets. So we just move those over to the side cause we're not gonna be messing with those until we uh, put it back, the trans back in. And then right here is your, um, your gear sensor so it's basically a gear selector sensor letting the car know which gear you're in so you go ahead and disconnect that and then there's going to be a ground right here i don't know if you can if the lighting's good enough but there's going to be a ground cable right here which is down here right here i already disconnected it so this ground is going to kind of move out of the way and as for the starter so we already removed these uh these bolts they're like two-piece bolts, but, um, or, or dual-purpose bolts. Uh, the longer one is gonna, there are 13 millimeters, and the longer one goes on the bottom, and the shorter one goes on the top. And I don't know if we can get a light in to see it, but um, there's a bracket, this little bracket for the wires here, and that's what the other stud is gonna be for, for the bolt. But if you look right here on the starter, there's a hole right here. That's where the top one goes, and the bottom is pretty much identical. And then those mount straight to the, the block itself, so the starter mounts straight to the block. So once you get those out, the, as you see, the starter is completely free. So we won't have to deal with that anymore um, until we put the, the trans back in. But from this point, uh, we're gonna, just going to need to disconnect the uh, slave connection. So right here, it's got, the, it's got an internal slave on this trans, so the slave is not external. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this um, little clip here, and that's going to relieve this 
this line from the internal slave and just be aware that it is going to leak some fluid and you want to keep it as high as you possibly can just to prevent any excess fluid leaking out because you know it's connected straight to your your brake uh, fluid reservoir so because it runs off of the same fluid but um, so yeah when you're doing this you are gonna have to get some more um, brake fluid and you're gonna have to uh, what's it called bleed the clutch when uh, everything is completely done so we're gonna do that when we get to that point but as of right now we're gonna disconnect that slave connection and then we'll move on to removing everything underneath that we need to do or that we need to remove to actually get the trans out so yeah just keep going all right so um we managed to get the axle nut off so yeah we have moved on from the um the mat of the slave connection so we just you know took the end of it and uh zip tied it with some microfiber so it doesn't leak and make sure to keep it above the reservoir so no extra fluid comes out but another thing to mention this is a little clip that you remove from the fitting you'll see it when you're looking at it but it um, it basically prevents the the fitting from coming out of the the hole here where the slave is inside the transmission so now that we have that done we took the wheels off it's jacked up and we remove the axle nut and what we're going to do now is um, also remove this uh, Torx bit or this Torx bolt here on the lower control arm. And we're going to separate the lower control arm from the steering, the, uh, steering knuckle itself. So that will give us room to remove the, um, the axle from everything and kind of have some leeway with the whole uh, hub itself. And we're going to do that for both sides because we are going to be removing this axle. And then just because I don't want to struggle with getting the other one back in, we're going to be removing the other one as well. And if you're not familiar with front wheel drive cars, most of them have a longer axle on either one of the sides. But this is going to be the more difficult one to remove just because it is longer. So we're going to do that when we get to that point. But as of right now, we're going to focus on that side and then we'll show you guys where we are as soon as we're done with that. But yeah, we're moving along here. All right, so it is the next day, and as you can see, we have reached the point of, uh, you know, where we have the axle out on both sides. So both the axles are out. <clears throat> so um, we are uh, ready to go with removing the uh, axles from the transmission. So basically what I did to get this out was I disconnected the tie rod end. It's a 15 right there. Um, oh yeah, don't mind this. Uh, the guy who swapped the engine, I guess, never um, put this back in its uh, factory location the, for the sway bar and link in the back of the bracket here. So, unfortunately, it bent, but we're, he's just going to replace that. But anyway, um, tie right in right here. That's a 15, which is this guy right here. Um, this one, uh, I'll have to double check the size on the axle nut, but that's just a Torx. This is a, um, a Torx head. Uh, I can't really remember the size off the top of my head, but I'll go grab it and let you guys know. But um, basically, you remove this Torx, like I said before, with the nut on the other side. And um, there's basically a collar right here on the bottom of the spindle right here where it goes in. And that's what locks the lower control arm in place. So to remove the lower control arm, this isn't the pry bar I used, but just to give you an example, there's a hole in the back of the control arm here. So I basically wedged the pry bar into that hole and just went and pushed down and this will pop out, you know, if you give it a good, a good tug. But you're looking at a pry bar about this size or you know like a crowbar just for comparison that's my foot so you know have something relatively big and same thing for this side there's a there's a hole back there you just push down on it and then the whole thing the whole um, control arm will come out and then you can remove the axle so now at this point we can drain the trans of all the transmission fluid because I don't want to make a mess after I pull out the axles but while we're over here this is the uh, the Torx I was using, it is a T55. So this is gonna be for the lower control arms and then the socket for 
axle. So the socket for the axle is going to be a uh, 32 millimeter, um, six point, you know, your normal socket. So 32 is going to take your axle nuts off because I didn't mention that last night. And yeah, um, yeah, I'm just going to drain the trans and get ready to pull the axles out. All right, so I got the tranny uh, draining. Good thing to do before you drain it. As you can see, I have both the fill and the drain out. So you're gonna want to take the, the fill out first. That way, you know, uh, you have a lot of, or the air will have the ability to, to come in. That way it's not like bloop, 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 coming under the trans. And um, that, and you have to make sure that you can actually crack it open to fill the trans. So just remember to take both out, or the, at least the fill out first, and then the drain, and then, you know, you can move on with doing this. So, got both axles out. There's that one. And there is that one right there. So with this one, as you can see, it is definitely longer than the other one. And this section right here, uh, I'll put a clip in right now of where that's located. And uh, basically, uh, it's locked in place by a little bracket. Uh, and that's connected straight to the block. Um, in the clip, you can see it right now. But um, we'll come back and right here, this is the, uh, the little bracket that holds it in place against the block. Um, and there's the two 13s that hold that in place and then once you uh, take it off you'll have access to you know remove the axle you know just you just push it to the side a little bit to break it free from the bracket which is right there I put the 13s back so it's right there and then there's the trans right right there at the tunnel <laughs> so um, yeah or I'm just gonna keep tearing apart the bottom here what we got to do is to remove the lower engine mount which is right there, pretty much the whole thing. Charge pipe needs to come off, and then from there, we can start loosening the bell housing uh, bolts, support the engine, and um, remove this top bolt. All right, so I have begun the process of removing the uh, bell housing bolts. So this is what I have uh, so far. Uh, you kind of just have to know where they go back and like where their homes are. Just keep track of where they are. I have a mental note of where they are. But um, you can see I have the engine braced because we're about to remove the uh, the trans mount from the top of the engine. So um, you can see too, I have removed the charge pipe, the lower charge pipe. And then back there is the engine mount bracket. The mount is still there, but you, you know you don't have to take it out. You just have to take off that bracket, and then the uh, the little I guess bracket that holds the exhaust uh, mount to the engine mount. So once you have that off, charge pipe off, you can uh, you know start taking these out. Don't take all of them out. It'd be wise not to. I left like two, I believe two in still, and um, I'm just gonna leave them in until I get this whole uh, mount situated. So I'm gonna start loosening this. Um, just remember to support both the engine and the trans because obviously you're gonna be removing the transmission. So, you know, and then uh, it would definitely help if you remove the uh, fender liner. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fender liner and then start on this transmission mount. All right, so we got the, uh, the fender liner move out of the way, we can see the trans, we've got everything there. The uh, mount, it's kind of interesting, um, first time I've taken it off, uh, it's like a two-piece mount. So just keep those together, make sure you remember the orientation for that. But uh, considering the fact that I kind of have a lot of clearance, I'm not going to remove this bracket on the, the transmission, this is like the mount bracket off of the actual trans. But uh, yeah, I just have to remove that bolt and then I have one more on the bottom that's kind of holding it in place but I highly don't recommend doing this by yourself um, I'm gonna do my best to uh, kind of muscle this thing out by myself and you know try not to drop it I shouldn't drop it but you know I'm not gonna be able to film or anything like that so I will keep you guys updated on the state of you know this whole thing so yeah uh, wish me luck I'm gonna yank this thing out and then I'll catch up with you guys after. So 
So as you can obviously see, transmission is out. Um, it was it wasn't too bad. Uh, you just kind of have to just go slow, go down slow, make sure you find a balance point on the trans. But right now would be a good time to inspect the uh, the throwout bearing. So this is going to be our throwout bearing itself, and then this whole system here is the slave, and this is what engages the clutch when you uh, depress the pedal. So the fluid uh, comes in from right here. And it's pressurized, just like a brake system, just hyd hydraulic, so it basically just pushes this forward and then this rests up against the clutch, um, I guess, spring fins. And um, that is what disengages the clutch. And uh, yeah, so right now I'm going to work on getting that off, the clutch, the factory clutch off, and show you guys how burned the... Um, the surfaces are for both the flywheel and the uh, pressure plate and then we'll take off the flywheel and then put on the new parts which are over there so before I did my first clutch um, I was always scared because you know obviously if you don't have a flywheel lock the uh, flywheels will just you know spin independent well it won't spin independently but um because the clutch is engaged but it'll um crank the engine over so I have learned in all the clutches that I've done without using a uh, flywheel lock you can actually manage to break all of these bolts loose by just using you know some leverage and you know kind of figuring out a good a good way to you figure out a good way to um, you know get the right leverage to actually crack the the bolts loose so I found that once you find that spot where you can, you know, apply pressure to loosen it without spinning anything, right there, that's how I do it without using a flywheel lock. So, I mean, I don't know, oh, that's sweet. This is the first one I loosened, so all of them are loose at this point, and I just use that same technique all the way around to get all of these loose. So yeah, and then for tightening, you want to do the same thing as well. You know, just try to find that sweet spot for leverage and, you know, try to work with it. All right, got all the bolts out. Now let's see the damage. Yep, she's definitely burning. Yeah, she's uh, she's definitely toast. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it. That's the pressure plate, and if you look at the flywheel, definitely, definitely toasted. Um, Cisco, enough, enough uh, digs. You're you're gonna kill your, you're gonna kill yourself. <laughs> There's plenty of burn marks on the flywheel. And a plethora of burn marks on the actual pressure plate. So definitely needed a transmission, or not a transmission, definitely needed a clutch. That is for sure. I mean, the clutch disc itself is pretty much ready. You can tell by looking at the rivets and how close they are to the actual friction surface, which it's pretty close. Um, ideally, you would, you know, take a... A uh, micrometer or a, um, a caliper and measure the thickness and that would be your you know your, your uh, reading for how how much life it has but you know it's I think that tells enough <laughs> it's definitely definitely time for a new one so I'm gonna work on getting the flywheel off there's a uh, torx bits or there's torx head bolts in there uh, I'm going to figure out what size they are and then uh, blast that off. Oh, another cool thing about these uh, these flywheels and basically this whole system is if you look at the uh, output shaft, there's no tip for like a, uh, a pilot bearing. So that's kind of cool. Um, I thought we would be dealing with pilot bearings, but these don't have them, which makes my life easier because if you look over here, the aftermarket flywheel, does not come with a uh, pilot bearing. So I was getting a little scared, I was a little, a little worried that I would have to use, reuse the old one, but come to find out, no need. So I'm gonna get that flywheel out 
and then uh, slapped a new one on there. So for anybody wondering, yes, I indeed <laughs> did and have been using a uh, Harbor Freight Electric Impact to do everything. And as you see, uh, it has definitely came in handy. And as you see, you should do as I say, not as I do. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's a T55 on there and um, an adapter for half inches to three eighths. So I highly do not recommend doing this, but you know. It worked for me, it might not work for you, um, so just definitely keep in mind that, you know, when you're doing this, you need to have, I guess, the proper tools. This works, but definitely uh, not the best idea in the world, but it worked out for me. Uh, fingers crossed, nothing bad happens. I just have, uh, that's, that's only finger tight, I just kept it in there so the fly would not fall off, but I want to take that off and, yeah, move on with the install. Ooh, that is hot. A lot of friction going on. Taking those off. All right. Oh, that is heavy. Ah. And that is your rear main seal. And good to check. This engine that was swapped in only has uh, 16,000 miles. You can even see the RTV is pretty fresh. So this shouldn't be leaking, and it's not. So that's good. I'm going to clean this surface off just so we have a good, you know, fresh surface. Um, clean up the flywheel surface so that when we put the clutch on, um, there won't be any debris. But yeah, good to go. And then uh, what I'm going to do with the uh, flywheel bolts, these guys right here, I'm going to put some, some Loctite on them. Another cool thing about this uh, flywheel is that the, the friction surface is actually replaceable. As you see, there's these little Allens all over the entire friction plate and what you do when it ends up like the the factory one all burned uh, what you do is you just take the allens out and then place the new friction plate on the flywheel that way you never have to remove the flywheel from the engine pretty much ever again unless you're you know disassembling it but yeah I'm gonna work on getting all this on the car and then and then I'll catch up with you guys uh, after I'm finished getting it all done so I went ahead and I cleaned the, the, this flywheel with uh, brake cleaner. But one thing I just wanted to note is that this flywheel is actually substantially lighter than the, uh, than the OEM flywheel. And that, that flywheel is actually a dual mass. So I don't know if I can duplicate it right here. But I'm going to zoom in on here. You can see there, uh, it's kind of moving. Like, the, like it's two pieces and yeah that's exactly what it is it's a dual mass flywheel it's actually two pieces um, that are somehow linked together internally using springs and whatnot it just helps with the uh, drivability uh, aspect of things um, including the uh, the sprung clutch so the sprung clutch plus the um, dual mass flywheel just adds for a more you know smooth drive as with this it's just a solid um, flywheel so it's just direct contact. The new clutch does have um, the clutch does have springs, so it is a sprung clutch. So it's still gonna you know have a little bit of uh, give to it, but for the most part, it's gonna be substantially um, different uh, drivability-wise. And this is gonna be it's gonna rev up a little bit quicker just because the uh, flywheel is a lot lighter. So I'm gonna start getting this on. Catch up with you guys later. So the uh, flywheel, everything's torqued down on the flywheel. I got the, the bolts in with some Loctite, uh, but the clutch here. So uh, in the box, uh, the actual clutch alignment tool was uh, missing for this specific uh, clutch, but I did have an extra one uh, from another clutch that I did before. The splines do match up, but the, uh, the tip of it, this right here, is not quite as wide as the inside of the the uh, I don't even know if I can get it inside of the the crank. There's a little um, pit down there where the the clutch alignment tool. It's where usually where the pilot bearing 
uh, sits. That's where this uh, goes into. But for this car, it doesn't have a pilot bearing. So um, I, I'm doing my best to line this, the clutch up perfectly straight. I mean, I'm gonna kinda give you an idea. That's, that's directly straight onto it. So if you look, the gaps on all sides are almost exactly the same, and this is dead on straight with it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all of the bolts down for the for the clutch, and uh, hope for the best, and hope that um, the output shaft for the transmission, right there, and just hope that the splines match up with the uh, the clutch. Uh, disc itself so wish me luck um, oh another thing to mention too the that a lot of people don't mention the clutch has the clutch disc actually has a front and a back so just make sure to put the portion usually with the springs exposed facing the the pressure plate because it has that room um, to rest that way you don't put your clutch in backwards so yeah, I'm gonna tighten all these down and then work on, I guess, getting the trans back in. Cause after that, I just have to make sure the splines line up. So wish me luck. Real quick before I tighten them down, just like anything that you're torquing or you know tightening down, clamping, whatever, uh, you want to do you know star pattern. So you go from one side to the other side to this side to that side to this side to that side. So you know just try to even everything out so that way it doesn't go on cockeyed. All I gotta say is that legit kicked my ass. Um, yeah, I'm by myself. That was a uh, very, very eventful. Um, I mean, it's in. It's I got a couple bolts uh, ran in. I met, or I actually um, had to remove the the bracket that I said that I I wasn't going to earlier, just because I had to remove that to get it out, and then obviously to get it back in, it had to be removed as well. But um. Yeah, that was that wasn't really fun. That really sucked because this transmission is not light. Um, your typical like Honda Trans or whatever like like that isn't really too heavy, so to say. But that was um, that was pretty heavy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna get these bolts here and just start um, putting this bracket back on. That way I can line up the the trans mount and get everything uh, situated with that. And then once I get this installed, it's just, you know, everything from here on out is just the uh, reverse of what we did to take it out. So I'm not gonna go and film everything that I do. I'll probably just catch up with everybody when I have everything put back together. And then um, go get the transmission fluid. I'll probably get that soon. Uh, fill up the trans with some fluid, fresh fluid, and then uh, bleed the clutch. And I'll show you how to do that as well. I might need another person for that, but we'll see. So for the uh, transmission fluid, you just wanna get the uh, dual clutch transmission fluid. That's what this uh, car calls for, for uh, you know factory specifications. So you just get this little pump thing. You get it from O'Reilly's. And um, the drain is right there. And the fill is right above it, right where the uh, the tube is going to, right there. So it's up there, you stick the tube in there and pump away. And it takes two quarts. So this is one quart, and I got another one over here. And uh, you're probably going to have to get this at the dealership, that's where I went and got it. Um, I don't know if Napa carries it, but um, I know O'Reilly's, I checked there and they didn't carry it, so just go to the dealership, it's like 20 something, 24, 25 dollars a bottle, depending on where you live, but yeah, just go for it. Alright, so the tie rod ends, the axles, and the lower control arms, all everything is in place, everything's tight, uh, suspension wise, uh, transmission's full, um, and for 
uh, for you know the for filling up the trans you have to make sure the axles are in so just remember before you fill it that the axles are in both sides are all tight on the suspension side of things but um, as for the clutch uh, there's the slave uh, the slave uh, line right there and then I have this red hose going straight to a water bottle so what I'm gonna do basically and this is gonna be bleeding the clutch and basically what I'm gonna do is there's this wrench right here it's a, an 11 millimeter and there's a little nut and a nipple on the end of this right here for bleeding and basically ideally you want two people with you um, I might go grab uh, somebody inside to go help, come help me do it but you want them to pump the, the clutch pedal just like you would like when you're bleeding the brakes pump the, the clutch pedal and then hold it down and then while they're holding it down you uh, crack it open, you crack the, the nipple open and then let all of the fluid flow into a container or a, like a water bottle like this of some sort so that way you can you can watch and see if there's any bubbles coming out and then once all the bubbles stop then that's when you know that the clutch is fully bled and there's no air in the system so yeah this has been a quite a involved process good thing I don't have to do it with this one because the engine is out the other engine is gonna be out and I don't have to deal with you know taking the trans out but yeah uh, to bleed the clutch is pretty much that's all you're gonna do right there all right so the car is on the ground everything's back in its home uh, laser tight, everything's plugged in, you know, the clamps are tight, everything's good to go, everything's routed correctly. Now, uh, when it comes to the wipers, I've always had a hard time before uh, when I didn't do this, but um, before you put them on, actually turn the car on and then uh, just hit down on the wiper uh, lever and then just have them, you know, run a cycle of up and down. That way that um, the actual uh, posts themselves are in the correct position for when you put the wiper on so that it's going to be flat when you uh, put them on both sides that way when you turn it on it's not going to get all wacky when you use the wipers so I'm going to get the wipers on and then we can go drive it alright <clears throat> alrighty so we're all good to go, we're running, uh, startup was good, and don't know if you guys can hear, but this clutch is definitely very loud, and uh, don't be worried about that clutch chatter, all that is basically is the throw out bearing resting on the actual uh, pressure plate, so it's just the way that the clutch is designed, which is why it makes a little bit more noise than normal, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse. See how she feels. She's definitely grabbing. Oh yeah. Alright, let me go ahead and get rolling here. So overall the car, I mean, pretty much maintained the drivability of a stock clutch, which is pretty cool. Um, the only difference is the major difference is the uh, engagement. So it's it's more I guess shorter like it's more towards the middle than it was on the top so it just kind of changes the engagement but overall it's great I, this feels amazing so just got done cleaning up uh, it's quite a mess uh, a lot of tools a lot of you know, stuff around all over the place but um overall the install wasn't like too hard um, I really just took my time plus I was you know filming so um, that takes up a lot of time because you have to document like everything you can't just you know get in your zone and do what you want to do uh, and what you need to do so I mean overall the, the, the clutch felt amazing uh, after everything was bled everything was good to go um, I, I even did some pulls in it just to see you know you're not technically supposed to be driving it aggressively for you know, like the first 500 miles but I went ahead and I just you know made sure that it was gripping and that it was going to be good for when um, it's fully broken in but like I said, for the first 500 miles, you should, you know, take it easy on it. Just normal day-to-day -day driving. Just try to, you know, get the heat cycles into it and help it bed into the flywheel. Uh, if you want to see uh, more of Cisco's car or, you know, some of his other cars, he's got a Jeep and a Beamer as well. Um, you can follow him on, on Instagram. We'll put it right, right here somewhere. Um, but, yeah, you can follow him. Keep up with his builds. Uh, I, I don't know what he has 
I know he has some other things planned for the ST uh, regarding some parts off of my car, but you know, in due time. Um, but if you want, um, please feel free to follow us on Instagram. Um, we'll put that right here too. That uh, way you can go and uh, keep up with all of the rest of our builds and everything we got going on. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, feel free to go and check out our website. We have hats, shirts, stickers. Just go check out everything, uh, everything that we have to offer. Uh, we are just starting out, so you know we're trying to get the ball rolling and see how people like our products and if they actually want to, you know, support us. So we really, we would all really appreciate if you went and supported us there. And um, yeah, we just thank you so much for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe if you want to, you know, uh, keep track of all the rest of the stuff we do on the channel and and just stay tuned for all of the the videos to come and. I we'll hope you enjoyed this video and we hope it was helpful and help anybody out there that was is planning on taking on this uh, task on, on their own. I mean, it's quite a uh, an involved process, but I mean, in the end, it's totally worth it just because you know, I'm jealous of his clutch because, I mean, mine isn't going bad, but it's, it's still the stock clutch and that one just feels so much more refined. And it's got the, that clutch chatter, which just makes it feel like so much more of a race car. But I'm sorry if um, the whole me filming myself thing is it bothers you. I mean, yeah, we usually have multiple people. But unfortunately, with the schedules, uh, this is just how we had to do it. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and we will see you in the next video.